June 2022. Today is when we say goodbye to the financial year 2021-2022 and we're welcoming a new financial year tomorrow which will be Friday 1st July 2022. And a lot of uh, business information has been happening in the month of June. It was the same month under which the national budget was presented to the Ugandans and it switched uh, the parish development model implementation also uh, kicked off. So clearly it has been a month filled up with a lot of implementations and a lot of activations on ground and on purpose, I should say. Welcome on board and thank you for joining me this early morning, like I did say. For all of you and wherever you're catching us from, thank you and thank you for making sure you start your morning with us every single day. It's officially seven minutes, it's only one minute past 7 a.m., this is your morning Kickstarter, a show dedicated to giving you business information as it does happen from the world of business. A lot is coming up from the world of business in regards to the updates that I do have for you in simple uh, review of the news updates that we had uh, from the previous bulletin. But however, we did pick up some of those that would definitely start your day with information that you would want uh, to have this early morning. And for all of you, wherever you are, you can still follow us on our social media. That is on Twitter at Smart24TV, Facebook Smart24TV official, Instagram is Smart24TV.com. Uh, Website that is www.smart24.tv and the YouTube is Smart24TV Live for more of that and remember to subscribe. Well, today among the days of uh, key discussions, we're going to be looking at something to do with uh, uh, access to cheaper internet and also try to look at cage farming. Not only cage farming, but there's also an initiative uh, from the, uh, the Swedish Embassy together with the United Nations Capital Development Fund, which is aimed at boosting small and medium-sized enterprises. We've also got something from the international updates where we have something from Zimbabwe. Things do not seem good for the Zimbabweans and their economy is strongly, strongly trembling. And also, we will be looking at something from Algeria, Nigeria as well, in regards to the oil and gas sectors from that particular perspective. Well, also, today in our topic of discussion, we will be talking at, uh, we will be looking at issues of um, We'll be greatly uh, taking a look at some things that are coming in from retirement and saving for retirement, or you would call them retirement benefits schemes that are available in Uganda and how you can clearly uh, follow up on your retirement benefits and which way or what is the possible way for you to make good use of your money and making your savings count any other day that passes by. So among the topics of discussion is what we definitely have for you in today's show. But also we will be looking at many things uh, regarding one, the SMB insight, where this time around we will be looking at uh, greatly trying to see how Uganda Revenue Authority is actually having trainings in Mbarara, but trying to at least find ways in which Ugandans can uh, fight corruption together and also make sure that they remit the taxes. With that, we start off with our, new, uh, with our updates here locally. And from the local perspective, we start with cage fishing. The cage fish farming is the most viable innovative solution to declining fish stock in Uganda. Participants in this type of fish farming have advocated for value addition, uh, which they have through reliable fish preservation methods to ensure uh, increased exportation to available markets. The exporters applying this method, uh, method say that 10 to 15 tons of fish are exported on a monthly basis. However, they are still facing challenges like high taxes that are imposed on fish feeds, which make it very difficult for them to contain the entire idea. Let's have more of this report. <laughs> Fishery development is one of the key development goals embedded in Agenda 2030 under the 14th Sustainable Development Goal in which countries seek to support the restoration of fish stocks to improve safe and diversified health diets. Markets here locally in Uganda, um, then we've got a market in Kenya, some of the, the Kenyan fish traders come and take fish here, and then of course Congo and Rwanda. 
yes. Ways of, of um, selling fish. Um, a lot of farmers sell what we call farm gate, which is just fish taken straight out of the lake and sold as it is. Um, but with the, with the uh, changes, the evolution of the industry now, we, we, we are, it makes sense to do a little value addition to the fish and, and sell it in, in, in different ways. The fish, you can sun dry it, you can machine dry it, you can salt it. And so there are several different way, things that you can do to the fish that, that helps you store it, for give it a longer shelf life, which means then that you are not constrained to sell it immediately you harvest and keep it for a little while. <laughs> In Uganda, fish is one of the strategic enterprises identified at the policy level in terms of its contribution to export earnings as well as high investment returns. This has attracted many Ugandans into this venture with new innovations like cage fish farming as well as value addition through preservation. At harvesting, fish is cleaned, salted and sun-dried for approximately two days before it's exported. What presently is basically Kenya, Rwanda and Congo. Um, there's a whole bunch of farms, so it's actually quite a big industry. It's a, it's a big industry. Um, and, uh, but the different, the different markets take different sizes of fish and different quantities, yeah. But um, here, say maybe we'll sell maybe between, presently between 10 and 15 tons a month. Of fish. Yes. The first challenge is the most available feed is imported. Not many people produce their own feed here. It's, it's beginning to pick up but it's still low. The imported feed is very expensive. It's a farm input but we pay tax. There's a tax on it which is of course is transferred to the farmer. Number one. Number two, when we, if we do sell the fish they've got to be transported in, a, in, a, in, a, um, in ice. So you've got to have a refrigerated container of sorts of truck with a with a like the one maybe the one you've seen down at the where they're harvesting. Um, those we're allowed now to import tax free, but now with the cost of fuel, still it's very expensive anyway. Okay. Um, we use drums, empty um, plastic drums as as uh, as uh, floaters for the cages. Each drum costs about 55,000 and per cage you're using, depending on the size of the cage, you're using between eight maybe and 20. Cage fish farming, uh, one of the innovative uh, methods that most of the farmers in Uganda are trying to uh, use because they want to use that space of um, trying to innovate new ideas. Every other day when you try your best to be uh, how much you, you feel is great for you. The, 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 uh, the situations about life uh, give you a lot to understand that people are innovating or people are competing for the limited space that is out there. Now fish, uh, when you look at fish, uh, fishing, for example, the fishing sector is one of those with a lot of competition uh, when you go on the mainland or both on, on, on the water bodies. But clearly, because everyone wants to fit into the space and contribute to the market, some people decide to go in for fish farming, people set up some ponds, and it's quite a profitable venture if you ask those who have actually been successful in this type of farming. Then there are those who have actually set out their goals and priorities in two cage fish farming, uh, where you have to cage your fish and put them somewhere. And these are methods that are actually 
uh, being used by people in the urban settings. People are actually uh, having some good space, whether it's, lim uh, it's limited space, but they can at least um, add value to that space by making sure uh, that they do cage fish farming. And the participants in this um, type of fish farming have advocated for value addition. Uh, through reliable fish preservation methods uh, because they want to export but the best way to export your product is when you preserve them uh, better and more and by this this is what you will definitely be earning uh, from the situation okay now let's move on to access to cheaper internet ugandans have been uh, asking the government for cheaper internet or access to internet cheaply uh, whereby they can easily carry on with their businesses there are a lot of people who have already now turned to digital space to the digital space to carry on with their business life and uh, since 2017 the ugandan government together with development partners have been scaling up internet access to all regions of the country through the national backbone infrastructure project now the official Uganda, that is nita Media Center yesterday to brief the country on the progress of this particular project that was initiated by government in 2017. According to National Information Technology Authority Uganda, the extension of the geographic reach of the internet broadband connectivity across the country is progressing according to plan with over 764 kilometers of optical fiber cable added onto the government national backbone infrastructure as part of a World Bank loan worth 775 million US dollars. Different functions will enable the country transform digitally through developing policies, uh, supporting uh, government agencies adopt these policies, and uh, also guiding government in the right policies to implement. We also uh, promote digital technology by deploying, implementing this technology and services, digital services for government of Uganda. Uh, NITA, through um, support by the World Bank in 2017, undertook a project called the Regional um, Communication Infrastructure Project, ROSIP. This was a 775 million US dollar project uh, that was uh, implemented through different components. Uh, the major components, I'll just define a few of the components before we go into details. There was the enabling environment component. This was to enable government have that baseline structure for digital services. Uh, there was a uh, connectivity component. Uh, this is through infrastructure setup, data center setup, and other infrastructure. Uh, the e-government project, now this is where we were developing solutions, e-government solutions in partnership with other agencies. And uh, the final component, uh, this was a project management component. Um, we have undertaken this project, or we undertook this project with four sectors in mind. This was uh, agriculture sector, health sector, education, and the justice law and order sector. And in all those sectors, we have fully developed and deployed solutions to enable them to transform. Additionally, the cost of the internet has come down significantly as a result of the intervention, with bandwidth now cheaper in Uganda than our regional counterpart. Also, digitizing if there's an agency that is not fully digitized or that doesn't have its processes in a digital form, the UG Hub platform enables you to digitize at no cost. Where there's a function that we can implement on UG Hub, we implement it without straining the MDA. I'll give an example. Um, we know that the most important information as part of the project, NITA Uganda has achieved significant progress in setting up information centers countrywide. Is the sharing or collection of data into a national data center. And we know how challenging it is to set up a data center. It, uh, initial costs for a, for a medium data center will be about 10 million US dollars. 
uh, it will take you about uh, three to five years to just have it uh, operational. And after that, you have to pay licensing fees for about uh, 500,000 US, 500, US dollars to even about two million US dollars for just uh, recurring fees. Uh, NITA, through the RC project, expanded onto the existing national data center that we had and were able to accommodate government systems at a marginal cost of about 40,000 US dollars per year. So the initial cost has already been covered. We don't have, we, we are not required to uh, spend that 10 million US dollars. You will request for hosting or data center services from NITA and we're able to take you up and the government of Uganda, through the Ministry of Finance, provides that support of maintenance, the licensing fee, most of these systems come with annual fee, and the support and maintenance are, ma are managed by NITA. Okay, and the project is uh, fast moving, according to the... But when you look at the situations of internet, to identify ourselves as East Africa's can, an East African country which has the highest uh, rates of internet because when you look you go to some countries like Tanzania Kenya the internet charges are not that high and uh, access to Wi-Fi is actually even uh, very possible in those countries not too expensive uh, but for us in Uganda some people are actually coming out to ask government to at least uh, find better ways of looking for options or for at least making it easier for the Ugandans to access cheaper, not only access to internet, but accessing internet cheaply. Internet that is at least fast, reliable, and uh, most probably affordable to the entire Ugandans. And this is to the Ugandan business com uh, community because most of them believe at a time when the internet is actually uh, the new, uh, um, it's actually when the generation is being driven by the internet and internet services being very pivotal and vital in day-to-day -day life, you will always have to understand that these are things that people need uh, to follow up and concentrate more on trying to at least ask the government to do so. So, but since 2017, government through Anita Uganda have actually been trying as much uh, to make sure that they have internet connectivity all over the country. Now, this is uh, a move that is uh, at least uh, focusing on championing the idea uh, that the entire Uganda can as well have internet connectivity all through and all over the entire country. But the issue of cheap internet uh, still being one of those that needs to be uh, fundamental in development uh, purposes, more so on the economic perspective or on the economic greed, you would wish that since the entire nation is actually switching uh, to the internet part of it or to the internet perspective, you would want to at least follow up more on those particular details. And with uh, that particular one, you can clearly uh, wish for all the best because we all use the internet preferably, if I'm to put it in that way, uh, we all use the internet. One, current after COVID-19, many businesses switched to online platforms, which means they are being facilitated by the internet. You, you're offline for maybe 12 hours, you're missing customers. You're offline for maybe six hours, you're missing trends in any uh, particular field. So this is why the internet is now shaping the world with a lot of information that does happen and that that uh, is uh, something that the entire uh, population in Uganda is crying out to government to at least give them access to internet, but most probably access to cheaper internet. Okay, still with the SMB updates this morning, uh, Sweden, the Swedish Embassy, together with the United Nations Capital Development Fund, uh, uh, have invested more than 5 million US dollars. Now, this 5 million US dollars is set to support access to renewable energy for small and medium sized enterprises in Uganda. So, more than 4.3 million Ugandans have benefited from this initiative since 2016, which shows you that the numbers keep increasing, more so in the access to renewable energy. For example, the small and medium sized enterprises. And in a time when most of them are actually uh, struggling to recover, this particular money uh, and this particular partnership between the United Nations Capital Development Fund and the Swedish Embassy is one that is definitely 
helping out together with the other recovery funds from the government to see and sustain the small and medium-sized enterprises in Uganda. Let's have the details to this one. The UN Capital Development Fund, UNCDF, has been in Uganda since 1982. UNCDF makes public and private finance work for the poor least developed countries like Uganda. In the same way, the UN Development Fund, in partnership with the Swedish Embassy, has earmarked more than $5 million US dollars to increase access to renewable energy. According to Her Excellency Maria Harkinson, the ambassador of Sweden to Uganda, this relationship is targeting the small and medium enterprises' growth in the country. The money we put in uh, as a development partner has yielded uh, concrete results, but also have been able to work as a sort of catalytical. It has mobilized additional funding, and I think that's uh, the way forward uh, in, in uh, where we have to go in development cooperation to, to really get good results. Uh, what I also like here is that we uh, support the economy and the growth of small and medium-sized enterprises, which is of course uh, in this case particularly on renewable energies, but it's also a part of uh, developing the Ugandan economy, the business sector. Uh, I am happy to see that it's been also uh, enterprises owned by women. UNCDFC financing models work through inclusive digital economies which connect individuals, households and small businesses with a financial ecosystem that catalyzes participation in the local and provides tools to eradicate poverty. Julius Magala from UNCDF revealed that 4.3 million Ugandans have benefited from 780 solar products courtesy of the initiative. As a result, 780,000 you know, solar products, and this is solar for households, businesses, health centers and communities, um, improved cook stoves also for households and institutions, and also clean cooking fuels, especially biogas, LPG, and briquettes are part of you know, those 780,000 uh, products. And those products have benefited an estimated 4.3 million Ugandans. Um, you know, from, from the, the product. In addition to that, I think there have been jobs created, more than 560, you know, full-time job created, and about 2,100 commission-based micro-entrepreneurs created out, out of this program. Uh, there's still more work to do. And one issue raised is was the cost of the electricity, and, and I fully respect that, and, and that it's still uh, expensive for many end users and, and, and uh, obviously that has to do with the uh, output and the demand and, and uh, uh, though we are happy to the result from this intervention we know of course that uh, there is need for more. Uh, we see that far too many still doesn't have access to electricity especially in rural areas and, and as you mentioned the cost. So this is uh, I think we, we should celebrate the results, but it doesn't mean that we stop or that we are satisfied with the situation as it is. We will continue and we will work with partners such as UNCDF also uh, going forward. UNCDF focus on energy contributes to achieving sustainable development goal 7, which focuses on affordable and clean energy for all, and SDG 8, which focuses on decent economic growth, financial inclusion, and improved access to clean energy finance for poor and low-income people. Bedson Mumbere, Smart 24 TV. Okay, and uh, when you look at the situations of uh, the United Nations Capital Development Fund is uh, that access to renewable energy for small and medium-sized enterprises especially. Uh, this has been in place since 2016 and uh, over 4.3 million uh, small and medium-sized enterprises owners in Uganda have definitely benefited from this one. So of which, if you're to look at the understanding of uh, the world in uh, business perspective from the recovery mode, of the small and medium-sized enterprises, you would wish to at least try to get images and pictures of um, trying to visualize uh, most of these things and all these images that why do people have to consider in line with what they do. But however, surprisingly, in most of the cases is that 
moving for further or moving forward every other day is that with um, this particular case of uh, supporting the access to renewable energy because it is a move that the uh, UNC is the United Nations Capital Development Fund is looking at to at least help these other SMEs that are struggling currently to recover and this access to renewable energy will as well uh, be of a huge benefit to the entire economy in that perspective and while more of uh, these particular initiatives and projects and programs are being set up in most of the areas to support key sector players of the economy especially the private sector because with the private sector not most of the uh, key private sector players were, were actually um, helped by the government during the time of um, business trials and should say during a time when most of them were actually bowing out of the business world during the time of COVID-19. So most probably these are some of the things that do come up and they are expectant of the details. All right. Thank you very much for being with me this uh, first half of the first hour of Smart Means Business. After the break, I'm getting back with the SMB International Lab that, uh, to have a look at stories that are making headlines away from Uganda. We have something from Algeria, I've got something from Zimbabwe, something from Ghana, and then something from Nigeria. All those are coming up after the break. Business updates across the borders of Uganda as they are transpiring. Uh, but still, do remember, we are making one year of Smart Means Business, your morning Kickstarter. And it's something that we are definitely proud of, something that we do every single day and something that we would want to continue doing uh, from all the different regards. Good morning. I'm Joran Paul Sonko.